One of the most important safety features on a vehicle is the braking system, so proper care and maintenance is vital to ensure its optimal working performance. Today we are going to install Bosch brake pads on a 2008 Honda Accord. Several tools are required to perform a brake disc installation, including a ratchet, sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers, wire brush or file, cylindrical wire brush, hammer, hub flange cleaning tool, impact driver, and torque wrench. You will need additional materials on hand as well. Shop towels, brake cleaner, penetrating oil, and synthetic brake lubricant are critical to successfully completing a brake job and restoring your vehicle's braking system to its original operating condition. The first step begins under the hood before the car is lifted and the wheels are removed. Begin the inspection process at the master cylinder. Check the fluid level. If the fluid level is low, this tells us the pads are worn or there's a leak in the system. If the brakes are inspected and the pads still have significant thickness, this indicates a leak in the system. Brake system leaks are generally obvious and can be felt by pedal feedback. Slow leaks, where there is not much difference in pedal feel, are usually found at the primary piston seal in the master cylinder. There may be a visible trail of fluid under the master cylinder on the front of the booster, or a leak at the primary seal may leak brake fluid directly into the booster. Finding this leak may require removing the master from the booster and checking for brake fluid where the master cylinder recesses into the front of the booster. The best way to determine how the brake system is operating is to inspect the old brake pads. The wear patterns on the pads will show how the system is operating and even indicate which components are causing wear issues. Start by raising the vehicle and removing the wheel. The best way to examine the brake pads is with the caliper removed. Caliper removal is easiest when the piston is fully seated against the bottom of the caliper bore. The piston will need to be bottomed anyway to accommodate the thickness on the new brake pads when reinstalling the caliper over the rotor. Compressing the piston causes the brake fluid in the caliper bore to move through the brake lines toward the master cylinder. Be sure to use a hose and open the bleeder screw. Now compress the caliper piston. As you know, brake fluid absorbs moisture and causes internal corrosion in the system. The majority of today's vehicles have ABS, so it's important to not move corrosion-laden brake fluid through the ABS unit. Doing so could cause a valve in the modulator to stick and turn the ABS light on. ABS modulators are generally not serviceable, so replacing one could be very expensive. Once the piston is completely compressed, close the bleeder screw. Remove the two bolts or pins that mount the caliper to the bracket and remove the caliper from the bracket. Check the brake hose for cracks and dry rot. Next, check the area around the piston dust boot for any signs of caliper leaking. Then hang the caliper out of the way so the hose isn't damaged. Now the pads are exposed in the bracket. This is the perfect opportunity to check for tapered or uneven wear. These two types of wear indicate high mechanical resistance at the slide pins or at the bracket to pad contact points. If the brake pads are hard to remove by hand or they have to be pried from the bracket, corrosion and dirt have built up under the abutment clips. Simply changing the clips will not allow the new pads to apply and release properly. This is why the bracket has its own service procedure during a complete brake job. Examine the face of the friction material for heat cracks and other unusual wear patterns such as stepped wear, possibly from the rust ridge on the outer and inner diameter of the rotor. All rotors have these rust ridges. Remove the two bolts holding the bracket, then remove the bracket. The pad bracket is where the majority of brake issues occur, which is why it's so important to service this component. Mount the bracket in a vise. 
Begin the bracket service by stripping the bracket of all hardware. Note which pin came out of which bore. There may be a dampening bushing on the end of one of the pins. Use a file, roll-lock disc, or wire brush to clean the area of the bracket where the abutment clip rests. Use a metal bore brush to clean the slide pin bore. When these procedures have been completed, spray the entire bracket with brake cleaner. Apply synthetic brake lube to the surface of the bracket where the abutment clip will rest. This will provide a moisture barrier to retard the development of new corrosion under the clip. Apply synthetic lube to the pin bore, but not too much and not all the way to the bottom. Too much grease will keep the pin from traveling all the way down in the bore, and the caliper won't go back onto the bracket. Reinstall the pins and abutment clips. Apply a thin coating of lube to the clips and pins. The cleaned bracket is now ready to be reinstalled on the vehicle. To aid in removal of the old rotor, spray penetrating oil at the base of the lug studs. Then remove the set screws with the appropriate tool. The rotor may be adhered to the bearing flange. If so, a hammer may be used to hit the face of the rotor hat to loosen it from the hub. Once the rotor is removed, clean the surface of the bearing flange with a roll-lock disc, wire brush, or flange cleaning tool. This will ensure the new rotor has a flat surface to mate against. Apply a thin coating of synthetic brake lube to the flange and install the new rotor. Reinstall the set screws and be sure to clean any dirt or grease from the surface of the new rotor. The rotor is now installed. It's time to put all of the components back together. Begin by installing the prepared bracket and torque it to specifications. Install the new pads into the bracket. With the prep work completed on the bracket, the new pad should slide into the bracket very easily. Unhook the caliper from its support and position it over the new pads. Tighten the caliper mounting bolts to specifications. Install the wheel assembly and torque to specifications. Now the vehicle can be lowered to the ground. Before starting the car, apply short strokes to the brake pedal until it's high and firm. Check the master cylinder level after the pedal has been pumped. Now it's time for a test drive. A test drive after a brake job should include approximately 10 complete stops from 20 to 0 miles per hour and about 10 slowdown cycles from 40 to 20 miles per hour. Be sure to allow a short cooling period between each braking event. Thanks for watching. Be sure to ask for the Bosch brake parts featured in this video at your local auto supply store. To find your local source for high quality Bosch automotive products, visit our website at BoschAutoParts.com. For professional assistance with your auto repair needs, contact an independently owned and authorized Bosch Car Service Repair Shop. Visit BoschCarService.us to find one near you.